Hi there. I seem to remember your face. Uh, your name is again uh, what, sir? Travis. Travis. You're the Indian. That's right. I remember yeah. you quite correctly now. Yes, yeah, my wife told me that you were going to show up again and they would do some more taping for the little history of ragtime. She also told me that I needed to shave and get my hair cut, as you see, and change clothes because she started to tell me that I looked like an end man on a menstrual show, mismatched shoes and wearing gloves that don't fit. Uh, at any rate, I'm going to give you my favorite poem by legendary Langston Hughes called Negro. I am a Negro. Black as the night is black. Black like the depths of my Africa. I've been a slave. Caesar told me to keep his doorsteps clean. I brushed the boots of Washington. I've been a worker. Under my hands the pyramids arose. I made mortar for the Woolworth building. I've been a singer. All the way from Africa to Georgia, I carried my sorrow songs. I made ragtime. I've been a victim. The Belgians cut off my hands in the Congo. They lynched me still in Mississippi. I am a Negro. Black as the night is black, black like the depths of my Africa. Langston Hughes. Now, you know what's important about this poem, right, Travis, sir? What does he say? He gives us history. First thing he says as a slave that he worked for Julius Caesar or one of the Caesars. Brushed the boots of who? Washington, of course, George. As a worker, he built up pyramids, made mortar for the J.J. Woolworth building. And this is gets me my favorite line. All the way from Africa to Georgia, I carried my sorrow songs I made ragtime. Langston Hughes. Now, we shall discuss Scott Joplin, my favorite guy to talk about. When you, the general public, thinks of ragtime music, almost everyone considers it merely something played in saloons by our white piano players with funny hats, striped shirts, and sleeve garters, sitting underneath Tiffany lamps and slapping upright pianos that sound as if they had been dipped in water. You mean that honky-tonk, rat-a-tat-tat music from the turn of the century? Well, but in the hands of authentic practitioners like Joplin, ragtime was a disciplined form capable of astonishing variety and subtlety. Usually it had four 16-measure themes, and like a rondo, it habitually reprised its first theme immediately after the introduction of each succeeding one. Joplin did for the rag what Chopin did for the mazurka. His style ranged from tones of torment to stunning serenades that incorporated the bolero and the tango. From the African word tangana, from the Moors. In pure musical dictionary uh, form, rondo means the following. An instrumental composition or movement in which the principal theme or first subject occurs at least three times in the same key with contrasting themes or sections in between and which is often the last movement of a sonata. Also, bolero, a West African Indian derivative of the Spanish bolero in 2-4 time. The Spanish bolero is in fact in 3-4 time. And tango, a ballroom dance of Spanish-American origin of four, in 4-4 four, four time, characterized by posturing, frequent pointing positions, and a great variety of steps. In addition, the tango is a Negro drum dance and festival. Tango, the word of Niger-Congo origin akin to the Mbibeo word, tamgu, meaning to dance. The music for the tango or composition marked by similar syncopation shown typically as a dotted eighth note, sixteenth note, and two eighth notes. Ah, here we are. 
ragtime, represented a more intrinsic blending of West African and European musical elements, elements than anything that had been heard before. At first, ragtime itself was originated by musicians who had learned to play tunes on different instruments without knowing how to read music. And it was developed by black itinerant popular mu music pianists, well-versed also in the music of Chopin and Liszt. The first person to put on paper the kind of rhythm and key signatures that was being played by non-reading musician was Ernest Hogan, a Negro. And of course, naturally one instrument absent from these solo performers and street bands was the piano. Nevertheless, it was an instrument most readily available to the early ragtime composers. In those days, our house without a piano was not considered to be a home. Now, James McIntyre was a white minstrel. He was the original member of McIntyre and Heath. In the year 1916, he said the following. Ragtime originated with the Negroes and was taught to me in the South in Georgia while I was working with the Billy Carroll Circus in the early 1870s. An old Negro taught me a song about a rabbit, said that his grandfather had brought with him from Africa, an African chant in true ragtime syncopation. The buck dance with hand clapping was ragtime. The dance was brought to Tony Pastors in New York City in 1879 by me. I claim that the anatomy of the Negro makes dances like the Buck and Wing and the Virginia Essen almost impossible for the white dancer to imitate correctly. These comments were addressed to Benjamin Robinson Hardy, the white man who built himself, and the inscription is even on his tombstone, the originator of ragtime. And by the year 1919, the month of June, as recorded in a flyer called Melody Number no. 3, Ragtime is Rhythm, George C. Boyd wrote the following. The first so-called ragtime songs to be published were actual, actually Negro secular songs that were set down on music by white men who affixed their own names as composers. 